Hallelujah. Ooh. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I I want to welcome you to the last service of the year. Amen. First, just to be decent, I want you to turn around. Even if I ask the question, they may not want to respond. So help me turn around to the persons in the front or the sideways and find out whether this is the first time that person is just because of transport difficulty. Well, for one reason or the other, is here with us to rejoice. I want you to make that person feel welcome as much as I would want you to. Would you do that for me? I want you to make the person until the person laugh, okay? If the person is not laughing, then the person is still angry. Praise the Lord. How many of you are ready to say goodbye to 2019? I don't know about you, but uh, I am not saying 2019 has not been good. But I think we need to say so long, 2019. Let's move on to something better. How many of you want to agree with me and say amen? amen? You are, like me, expectantly looking forward to a better 2020. I wrote a book titled The Power of Your Expectation. It is, it is very, very important that we make sure that what we are expecting is actually correct because you do attract what you expect. And I want to first and foremost, before I say anything, I want to declare over you your 2020 shall be great. In fact, let me put it this way. Your 2020 shall be greater than any year you have ever seen. This is going to be your best year yet. I declare in God's name as I take my position. I declare that from this moment, as you approach the last hour of this year, I command everything and anything that does not belong to your destiny. We cast it down. We break its power. We uproot it from your life. We destroy it. We break its hold over you. We separate you from it. We uproot it out of your life. We cut it asunder. We burn it with the fire of God. We destroy his power over you. In the name of Jesus. Wow. I come to pray. I don't know about you. But let me say one more time again before I bring the God's message. 
Again, let me say, I'm not against 2019. But there are some times when there is just that much you can take. And you come to a point where you say, okay, how about we try something else? How many of you are like that? Let me see your hand again. I want tonight's meeting to be a very powerful, interactive meeting. Those of you all, all in the gallery, please stay with me. I don't know why your lights are off all day, but I wish somebody could put all the lights, okay, on for now. But I, I, I want you to know, please keep your attention on me, okay? And allow those who must move around sometimes needlessly to do their job, whatever they want to do. But keep your attention on me. You have left your house to come. Why don't we make this few hours or minutes we're going to spend together very productive? Amen? Amen. I promise you when you leave this place, you will be happy that you came. Amen. Not because of me, but, but, but I promise you, you will be happy. Amen. Because God does have a message for you. Let me say one more time again, very quick prayer. How many of you are very expectant? I mean, really expectant. With our hands raised up, I wanted to make one simple prayer. Lord, thank you for 2019. But right now, Lord, my eyes are focused on 2020. And I begin to declare 2020 better, 2020 greater. Begin to open your mouth. Thank him for last year and begin to open your mouth to declare. Begin to create your own 2020. Yeah. It's like, it's like a salad bar. It's like a buffet dinner. Begin to create. Begin to speak. Begin to pick the things you want. Put it in your plate of 2020. Begin to declare. Begin to say it. In Jesus' name we pray. Choir and musicians, I have one job for you. And then after that, I'm going to ask you to take your seat and get ready for yours. Because sometimes we are too preoccupied with serving other people that we miss out on the thing. I want you to walk this last one hour with me by faith. I'm going to ask you to do certain things that if you're not very careful, you are going to miss it. Jesus Christ told the tired man who had walked all night to go out to the deep, cast your net. There are sometimes he does certain things that are very funny, looking at a paralyzed man and his hand cannot move and he says, stretch it out. I'm going to ask you, by faith, we're going to sing a song together. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. At all Satan, sickness, darkness, failure, disease. Get it behind me. Victory today is mine. I want you to sing it. I want you to prophesy it. I want you to declare it powerfully with all your mind. Don't talk to anybody until you finish talking. Come on. Hey. Oh, 
that you have been using to do so many, speak so many negative words that have affected you. Tonight, we are going to turn it around. Amen. And we are going to use it for good. Amen. Just one more simple prayer and I will allow you to take your seat. I don't care what things knowingly or unknowingly may have daunted you, followed you, have stuck to you, or you have fought against, dealt with, all your life. There are certain times when certain things like a stubborn, you know, um, image, you know, will follow us even when we're trying to shake it off. It will continue to persist on and on and on and on. But I want to declare, I want your mouth to say that particular thing because it's about you so you know it. Whether it is failure, whether it is sleeplessness, whether it is darkness, or whether it is waste pain or a particular fear or a dream that has dogged you over the years or especially in 2019, we want to declare there shall be no carryover. Yeah. In the next few seconds, I am going to join you. I will give you a few seconds to declare and stand on your authority as God's child and tell that thing, no, I refuse to carry you over to a new year. Open your mouth and declare that. Command it to go. Command it to go. Break its power over you. Your mouth is powerful. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, I said last prayer, but one more prayer if you can. I just want us to be sincere before God. How many of you think we all do? It's human nature. Look at me, look at me. How many of you think that in the course of 2019, you did something you shouldn't have done, said something you shouldn't have said, moved to where you shouldn't have moved to, made some relationship you shouldn't have done, things you rather wish you don't want to talk about or think about or anything like that. Certain things that happen that still hurt you, you still have the pain and never things like that. And maybe it caused you a lot of loss, emotional loss, relational, marital or whatever, job-wise, whatever. But there was some sort of loss 
something that you wanted to get but you didn't get an answered prayer that you were expecting to see is materialization but you didn't quite see it and um, it was such a blunder that you don't want repeated in the new year anybody has anything like that let me see your hand something for which you want God to heal you from something you lost and you want God to restore you that is healing power to do that right now how many of you how many of you have need God's restoration to a second chance if you like with your hands two hands raised up I want you to make that prayer unto God those in the gallery please focus on me focus focus on the Lord right now talk to him now ask him I need a restoration of my joy that I lost of the health that I used to have the joy that used to bubble inside of me the man that the prayer warrior that I used to be Lord restore me restore me to the job that I lost restore my relationship with that beautiful girl my wife my husband that I lost my business that I lost I need a restoration give me a second chance Lord give me a second chance Lord let's do it all over again father please one more chance Lord I plead with you in Jesus name we have prayed let me ask you a simple question if God how many of you are serious in the last prayer you made let me see your hand now I'm, I'm not talking to just my church members I know that not everyone here is a member of the church I know you, you are but but you likely a part of the body of Christ and so today I'm addressing you as the body of Christ how many of you are sincere in wanting to ask God to give you a second chance in 2020 for any failure any mistake any blunder you are serious now I, I I'm, I'm serious I, I really maybe you backslided maybe something bad happened but you want God so please give me another chance let me see your hand father in the name of Jesus Christ I stand now in your name dear Jesus you didn't go to the cross for nothing you are the redeemer you are the restorer you are the healer you are the God that come came to reconcile man to yourself anything we have lost any mistake, any wrong step. Lord, whatever we said wrongly, in any way we offended you or man, every single step that took us backward, Father, restore us again. Restore us again. In 2020, we will never make any mistake anymore. He lost, oh God, from every blunder raise us up again amen. in Jesus name we pray amen. and amen. amen this is God's word that he said I should declare to you in 2020 Glory Christian ministry to you and to as many as want to is that 2020 is a year of restoration a question a moment ago I said how many of you are so serious so serious that you truly truly don't want to make any mistake anymore and that you really really want God to give you another chance and to restore to you the joy the position the authority the status 
the relationship, anything that you lost, any wrong step, mistakes that you made, any wrong word, things that you destroyed with your mouth, with your actions. How many of you I act, you are serious in wanting another chance? And before you could pray, God has said, I will restore. As many of you that truly mean it in the depth of your heart, I want you to shout that word, restoration. Go, rest. When I call, when I say 2020, you shout restoration. 2020! Take your seat now. That is God's word. Hallelujah. I know it's going to take me some months. But no, no hurry. We have the rest of the year to eat from this word. I'll just give you the headliners. I'll just give you the headliners. First two verses I want to read uh, from Joel chapter number 2, verse number 25 and 26. So I will restore. I want you to know that the one speaking here is God Almighty. The one who created you, the one you are speaking with in prayer a moment ago. And the one who loved you enough to keep you alive to see a new year. You are about to step into a year alive because... Your job here on earth is not finished yet. And he's saying to you, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. Yeah, somebody's really ready for it. He said, I will also restore to you the years that the crawling, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the stewing locust, my great army which I sent among you, he said, I will restore the years. Verse 26, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. I don't know how this word keeps repeating itself. Last year, the gods also told us the same thing about eating and being satisfied. This year, you will be satisfied. He said, you will eat and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord, your God. In other words, understand that the reason why he wants to restore and make you eat fat it's so that you will remember to praise the name of your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And then he said, the remaining part with me, everybody that's alive that can read, go. And my people shall never be put to shame. I want you to say something. I want, I want you to hear me and hear me well. Shame shall never come near your house. There are too many times when you have had to keep your mouth shut even when people who should not be talking in your presence are talking. Because, see what I did with my hand? You put your hand in your pocket. When you don't feel anything, you keep quiet. Let me tell you something. Your pocket is not your identity. Well, let me take it easy. Let me say it again. Shame and you shall never meet in 2020. In the name of Jesus Christ. But the first line of the 25th verse said, and I will restore. The Old Testament, would say, the Old King James would say, the new ones would say, so I will restore to you the years. The New Living Translation would simply put it this way. The Lord said, I will give you back what you lost. Simple. I'll give you back what you lost. Oh, come on. Only one person can say amen to that. Yeah. What is restoration? The English dictionary simply defined this word in three ways. Number one, restoration means to return something back to its 
former, original, or normal condition. To return something to its former, original, or normal condition. In other words, there has been some kind of um, shaking, some kind of, uh, um, you know, a misrepresentation. Some accident may have taken place. And you are not what you are supposed to be. Sickness, accidents, mistakes, one thing or the other, even if they were not your fault, sometimes can push us out of position. Certain times, the steps we take, words we make, we sometimes the convictions that pushed us to, into an action can distort our pathway away from what God meant. That's why we are so glad when God says, I will give you back what you have lost. And it simply means, I am going to restore you back, I'm going to return you back to former, and somebody say original. Anything in your life that was not original from God, anything that is in your life that is not straight, anything that has been tampered with, I stand tonight in my prophetic office and I declare it shall return back to normal condition. In the name of Jesus Christ. Healing is good. If the cloth you are putting on is torn, you can take it to the tailors and they can put it together. But any very, you know, very close observer will notice that this thing had been torn, had been put together. But when God returns something to an original position, <laughs> you are coming back to normal position. You are coming back to the original position. No fakeness about it in Jesus' name. Dictionary also said, secondly, rest to restore means to re-establish or to bring back into existence or to set in a proper order. They write them so small, I don't know whether you are seeing the forms very clearly. It means to re-establish something. I want to declare that whether it is in your business or in your marriage, in 2020, God is going to re-establish you. Yeah. I am not going to do much of teaching tonight. That's not what I came for. I basically want to declare prophetically and pray over you. Is that okay? Yeah. I want to say again that God is going to bring you back into full existence and get you back into the proper order of things. As a church, as an organization, as a family, between you and your husband or your spouse, God is going to bring you back into proper order. When God makes a promise, it's because he has the power to do it. And if you know, him, know a little about him, when he says it, it's already done. He will reestablish you yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah. Thirdly, the dictionary. I'm just giving a dictionary word. Another day I will tell you about what the Bible teaches about restoration. But these are simple things that you two can even read. So to, to restore means to return back something back to its former, original, normal condition. Secondly, it means to reestablish or bring back into existence or proper order. And thirdly, it means to give back. Somebody say give back. No, no, you're not saying it right. Give to give back. give back. Some force sometimes is needed to be applied. But God is on our side. And God is going to tell anything and anyone, remember what I'm saying, anything and anyone that is taking and holding back your thing, what is he going to say to him? Give back! The, the, the dictionary said it means to give back. Or to make a return or restitution of something taken away or lost. It means to return or to make a restitution. 
or something that is taken away That is what it means to restore. But before I go anywhere, let me give you a context of what the text we just read from Joel said. The teacher in me will not allow, you, allow me to go ahead until I give you a, a bit of a context because I'm addressing a mixed congregation. There are some of you who either here or online may need to understand when God said, so I will restore to you the years. Number one, you need to understand the fact that years... It's made up of months and seasons and weeks and time. You can lose friendship and you can restore. You can lose business and you can restore. You can even lose money and you can get it back. The one thing that you cannot restore is time. Oh, trust me. <laughs> Human beings have made an industry out of wanting to make old people look young. It doesn't work thoroughly. So what exactly is God saying when he begins to say, I will restore to you the years? Not year, years. We will talk about that. But what is he talking about? What gave birth to this discourse? Well, that, for that, to answer that question, you have to go back to the first chapter of the book of Joel. We're not going to read about it. But just is direct overview for those of you who will later on read it and understand it. There was a period in the time of Israel history that because of sin, because of backsliding, God had been walking with Israel by a covenant as a type, as an example of what he will do with anyone after that period of time. But at that time, God was walking Although he was God of the whole world, but he was working with a nation. And through that nation, how he dealt with that nation, he wanted to show to every humankind when the time comes to extend his love and rulership to the whole world through Jesus, what, what blessing he will be to anyone who chooses to worship him. At that time, many hundred thousands of years ago, he chose one nation by the name of Israel made a covenant with them told them what they should do what they should not be doing and he also told them the consequences that will come when you disobey they accepted and made a covenant and agreed to live by it well Israelis are human beings too it's only sometimes in Africa we think that when the person has a white skin the person is closer to God a human being is a human being the Bible declare all have sinned Trust me, every color of his skin is wicked. Not only blacks. Don't you believe that lie? Because there are some of us who have traveled a bit to see. So when Israel backslided, when Israel rejected God, disobeyed God, and began to live like every other nation, they, by their action, invited the wrath of God. Their covenant that they have broken now worked against them. So God allowed, God as it were stayed back and allowed an army of destructive insects, locusts, to invade that land. And wave after wave after wave of locust invasion, and remember that agriculture and Israel basically live by agriculture. They plant and then they harvest. But when locusts that can I mean, you planted something, the thing was just growing up, and locusts will come and they will eat everything, even the back, B A R B R C um, R K, the back on the tree. It, they will eat not only the leaves, the branches, the back, everything, and everything dies. And that had been going on for some time. Now, hunger came, and there was no rainfall. And so, fast came. There was nothing. Animals were dying. People were dying. They used animals for worship in those days. There was no church service anymore. No offering. Priests and pastors are crying. Husbands and wives are crying. Fathers are crying. Everybody was crying. Business was bad. It was so terrible a thing that was going on. Now, your God and my God is a loving God. 
whenever the lesson here in this short prophetic book is this whenever we disobey whenever we commit sin God's justice we've been talking about God's grace God's mercy God's uh, favor yes but if God is only those things without justice then God is a false God Behold the goodness of God and the severity of God. The church has sort of spoken only about one side of God and never want to talk about the other side. There is no coin, no currency that has only one side that will make it an illegal tender. God is merciful, yes, but God is also a God of justice. Every sin, every wickedness has to be met with justice. Not revenge, justice. And so by their action, sin came in. So a father like God could not just stand away, hands folded, and look at them forever. So he started looking for a way to help them. Somebody say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. How many of you know we human beings will always make, will commit blunders? Even when we don't mean it, we will do it. The way God does is this. When God wants to help you first, he will send a prophetic voice to you. By a prophet, God led Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were sustained and retained and maintained. God will never do a thing without revealing it to first his uh, prophet. Hear me very clearly. I'm not calling myself a prophet, nor am I your prophet. But when God wants to do something for you, first, he will send a word to you. We've already gotten our word for 2020. Uh, what's that word one more time again? Shout it. So he sent a man of God by the name of Joel. Now listen to me very carefully. This is where most Christians miss it. This is how Joel started in the first chapter of chapter, uh, chapter 2. He started and said, Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. Difficult days are ahead. And then he began to tell them how they need to come out. They need to repent from their sin. They need to cry. They need to declare a fast. They, they need to truly repent. They, 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 one of the traditions in Israel is when you get angry, they, they, they tear their outer coat like this. That is an outward sign that you are really angry. God said, don't tear your coat. Preserve it. Okay, no obioma around to help you. Okay, just keep your... I don't want you tearing your cloak. I want you to tear your heart. I want you to truly, truly be sorry that you disobeyed me. Let me tell you something. Right at this beginning, he is promising restoration, but restoration is conditional. This is how Christians miss it and say, well, I heard about the other one. It didn't work for me because you are sleeping. When we are trying to explain he said, cry, repent, cry to me, break, I mean, break away everything. In fact, he said, from verse 1 to verse 12, he was talking about the calamity that has befallen Israel. In chapter 2, from verse 12 to 17, he was now telling them to repent, to mourn, to cry with fasting. And then he said, gather everybody, the elders, the ministers, Imagine, he said, the bridegroom, the bride, tell her to get out, remove her gown, come out. It is time to pray. Children were not exempted. And you will think God will leave out nursing babies. He said, gather the nursing babies too. Man, that must be serious. And so God said, gather this, everybody, and begin to cry to me. And it was, now listen to this word again, it was their right response. It was their correct response to God's prophetic voice that now led from the 17th verse 
from the 18th verse to the end of that 27th verse of chapter 2 that now God now said all right since you have cried to me since you have prayed since you have called me I will now arise I will now restore you I will give you back everything you have lost so notice that yes there is restoration that has been promised us but it is conditional that we sincerely in the areas we can we, we become aware that we have missed it it is time it that that restoration is conditional on our true repentance i hope i'm making myself very clear yes god's justice will demand and hold back blessings when we sin when we disobey when we go against his commandments his justice will demand that but i want you to know that where sin abound grace god much more about God is much more willing a father that can't see his children die suffer in pain and so he is quick to restore but only when you truly say that word truly from your heart repent the Bible did say in Psalm 103 verse 8 and 9 that the Lord is merciful and gracious slow to anger abounding in a mercy he will not always strive nor will he keep his anger forever somebody say thank god. thank god god knows in 2019 what pains you have gone through what th what things you and i have lost relationship that we have lost and broken dreams that we let go one is sure we thought it's not going to happen again so we'll let them go mistakes that we have made Investments that we did and we lost. Projects that we started that we couldn't finish. On and on and God knows everything about these things and yet he is saying, when we now realize how far we've gone from them, yes, we started the project. Yes, he gave us the job. Yes, he wanted to give us all of these things. He gave us a baby, he gave us a family, he gave us a new car. And by but he never expected that those things that he blesses us with will take us away from him. And today most of us have left God. And some, some of us are now beginning to see where we made mistakes. And God is saying, if you are sincere, if you are truly, truly, truly sincere, come back to me with crying, with weeping, with fasting. Everyone should be, take, should be taking this serious. And I wanted to see how many people he called, the min, from the ministers to the babies. Let them come before the, before the house of God. Let them stand before the, uh, let them lie flat, stand, okay? lie before the altar and the porch. Let them cry. Let them say, God! And he said, spare your people. Spare your people. I like that prayer. We'll be coming back to it. I think the 17th verse. Two things we're going to cry tonight. Someone says, spare your people. The second reason is, he said, why should the enemies, why should the people who do not know God say, where is their God? Ah, nobody will ask you that question in 2020. Yeah. But it all starts with how you are going to return back to God. That's why I want to get this off out of the way. In a minute, I'm going to be true. And we're going to make that prayer. Because see, restoration is going to be based on how sincerely we cry unto God. Now, I know that there are two types of restoration, two forms of. When God made this promise to Israel, he did restore to them their vineyards, their houses, and, and their, their cities came back, and he did promise that he's going to restore their years, and of course, several other things. So there is physical and material restoration. We all need it. In Jeremiah, God was even saying, and I will restore health to you. Jeremiah 30 to 17. We're going to talk about all of those things. So there are material things that God can restore. But I believe that the most important loss in the life of a person is a spiritual disconnect from God. Many people today, even born again people, backslided in 2019 because the road was too tough. Because we were too preoccupied with wanting to succeed. We started pursuing things that should be pursuing us. We abandoned the house of God. You know it. You used to be fervent prayer in prayer. Never missing church service. But today we have to now follow you up as a newborn, uh, in, in, in a new member of a church. 
My God, help us. Only Jesus can restore us back to. And we're going to talk about it more and more. But I, 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 I want to begin to round up with some of the, giving you an idea of some of the things that are, that are pointers of the things that God, God is going to restore in our lives. So there is a physical restoration, there is spiritual restoration. But particularly, particularly directly, this is the message. God said 2020 restoration. When we act, and if we act appropriately, restoration will come in 2020. And 2020 will bring us restoration. Let's say it again. Restoration 2020. And 2020, I can't stop saying this. I woke up that morning when God spoke these words to me not too long ago. When he woke, he woke me up and he said, and all I could shout was, let it begin. Let it begin. And God said, it has already begun. It has. And for some of you who do not know, but and that is inside the internal family matter, I'll tell you exactly any other things like this. That was after the seven days fast we did. For some of you. He said, it has already begun for you. So, this is exactly, precisely, and this is what I want you to take home. This is how I ran the message up. 2020, what is it again? His promise to us in 2020 is a complete, all-round restoration. It involves spiritual restoration, material restoration, financial restoration, restoration in your health, restoration in your status and position restoration in your dreams god even told me tell them i will even restore their hopes and dreams yeah. and people will begin to rise up and dream again yeah. and he said there are two things he said i will restore the things that the enemy stole from you he said, most of you left off my walk to concentrate on something else. And so you left and the enemy took, took that advantage to steal from you. And the enemy is the cause of some of our loss. Like Job. How many of you will agree with me that in the case of Job, it was not because of a sin he committed. In fact, he didn't even know that there was a contest going on between God and uh, Satan. And that was why he was so exasperated, confused. What is happening? I didn't make, I, not, I, I look this well, I've not done anything wrong. What is happening? God! And he, he said some things that weren't, shouldn't have been said. But Satan was the one at the root of destroying everything. But you know the rest of the story too. God gave him twice. The Bible said God returned the captivity. I want to declare God will return your captivity. God, and this is the part that excited me. He said, I will also restore self-inflicted losses. And I said, Lord, I think, I think you are talking about me right now. <laughs> I won't go into that, but Abraham in a city, Genesis 20, when was asked by Abimelech, that lovely sister by your side, who is this? This is my sister. <laughs> Abimelech took her in the night, God came to Abimelech and said, if you don't restore, you are a dead man. How many of you know that loss was a self-inflicted one? The prodigal son had nothing that he lacked in the father's house. But he saw some good friends, some guys, some dudes doing some new things and he thought he could join them also. It took him some years of pain, but he realized the fact that he made a mistake. His was a self-inflicted loss. But did, did the father restore him back? Yeah. Oh yes, you are going to be restored. Yeah. I wanted to lift up my hand and say, Lord, I am going to be restored too. Please restore me too. Ask, 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 say it, ask it. Whether it's the enemy that stole it, whether it's self-afflicted, God help me! God help me, please! He 
In Jesus' name we pray. There are six things I want to quickly tell you that you should specifically expect to be restored. Now again, all based on your right response to God's call to repentance and crying with, with, with crying and fasting and returning unto God. You know, and most of you are aware, except those of you who are not members of this assembly, we spend the first few days of every year not in reveling and eating rice. We spend the time to fast and to pray. From 1st of January till about the 19th of January, we will be doing that. We'll be praying. You will get the details of that information much more later. The reason why we do that is because more than at any other time, we now realize that for this restoration to be part, to be full, to be complete in our lives, we now need to act correctly. It is only our right response, sincere cry from the heart, God, spare your people, spare your family, my family, my business. Why should the enemies progress and I am retrogressing? Whether they don't say it loud or not, you can see it in their eyes. They said, and he's the one who goes to church. Ah, God, you will change it. You will restore us. Number one thing God has, I want you to expect. I want you purposefully. I want you to expect restoration in these areas. Number one, losses and labors of past years. Losses and labors, toils and struggles of past years. I just mentioned a, bit, a moment ago, Luke chapter 5, how Peter toiled all night trying to catch something. In the morning, Jesus Christ met him, nothing was there. And after he allowed his boat to be used, and that was the temptation. And that's a t always a temptation in the church. I always look at people's faces. I don't have anything. I don't want to give. I don't know why God always comes to people who are not in position to give, who are, should not be willing to give. When you are tall all night, you are not a happy man without anything. And it was his boat that Jesus Christ came to ask for. And Peter gave it to him. I don't know in 2020 what God will ask from you about for, to, for, for the use. Maybe your business. Maybe he may ask you to give him center position in your family. Maybe he will ask you for time. Maybe he will want to ins come into the midst of your schedule and interrupt your schedule or your plan. He may tell you to do something. He may tell you to give something away. I don't know what he will ask. But when Peter allowed Jesus to come into his boat, used it for some time and then told him, he said, now you get into the boat and go outside. It is night we fish, sir. And we did it all night. We didn't catch anything. I don't see how this is going to work. But I like the way he said it in, in verse 5 and 6 and 7. Luke chapter 5. He said, but at thy word. Which word? Restoration. The promise of restoration. At your word, I will let down the net. And when he did, I like what the Bible said. Uh, in verse 6 and when he had when he had done that they caught a great number of fish somebody in 2020 will catch a great number of fish the bible said their net was breaking verse 7 i like that they signal to their partners in the other boat you will have to call on other people to come and help your breakthrough when that time come, may you have somebody to signal to. Amen. There are some of you who are move alone by profession. If you, have, don't, if, you, if you don't have anybody to signal when your breakthrough comes, my name is Pastor James. If you meet me, I will give you my bank account number. But somebody, I said somebody is going to have more than enough. Let me say something about Christian and prosperity. 
The reason why you are not prospering and God is holding back your breakthrough is because all you are asking for is for God, for God to give you something that's enough for you. God doesn't do that. Because every time he wants to bless somebody, God does not have you alone in mind. In fact, I just said that to be nice. The right way is, it is not you he has in mind. When he says, take, remember what he calls, he calls us a steward. A steward is a person that works for somebody. He has no right to eat from his master's proceeds. It's what the master gives to him. For every time God is giving something to you, it is because he has something or some project in mind. Until we come to have that steward mentality, breakthroughs will evade us. And by the way, if all that you have is enough for your family just to go by, that is not a breakthrough. I will leave it. You will understand me later. Second thing I want you to believe God for in 2020. Number one is for God to restore your losses and labors of past years. Number two, youthfulness. That's me talking. He was talking to me. God is going to restore my youthfulness. Say that. In Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 7. <laughs> Before I read that, some of you know what God said in Psalm 103 verse 5, right? The Bible said God satisfied our mouth with good things that our youth is renewed like uh, the eagles. And that was how Moses was. Did you know that Moses was the only man that we, I know of that walked to his funeral? Sent out the invitation card and he, he, he walked to his funeral. God said, okay, this is the place. Is it? Moses said, sir, is it here? No, no, move forward a little bit. Is it here? He said, yeah. Is it here in this position? Yeah. He said, now lie down. Okay, I'm lying down now. He said, die, die now. <laughs> the only thing Moses didn't do, he didn't bury himself. The Bible said God buried him. I want you to know that you can be walking and you don't have to be sick before you die. Let me look at you and let me declare, you will not be sick in 2020. Debilitating sicknesses is not your portion in the name of Jesus. God said, I will not put any diseases of the Egyptians on you. For I am the God that healed thee. That is your portion. I said, that is your portion. Abraham and Isaac were old. Humans and nature says it's over. But God said it is not over until I say it's over. There was no medic medication that was needed. God child Isaac came. What people, do not for, people, people don't remember is that even after Isaac had come and gone, the leftovers produced many more with Keturah and several other people. There is always a boat full and you have to signal for orders to come. That's what I'm telling you. If God is the one blessing you, it is, it, you, you will have to have help. When I tell you what the Bible means by restoration, you will understand. Whenever God restores, he does not only make... The dictionary said he brings to the original state. The Bible will tell you when he restored Job, it was twice. So we're coming to that. We're coming to that. So how many of you will want to be like me and they don't have to say you have to go to hospital. You have to carry oxygen back. Oh, you have to do defibrillation or whatever. And then you have to do kidney transplant or that. I cancel every prognosis like that, every doctor's declaration over like that over you in the name of Jesus. If you are doing it in 2019, I say because you are hearing the sound of my voice, I am sending power of healing into your body. You shall never again be sick. I command the power of sickness broken in your life. I spirit of infirmity broken in your life barrenness I curse you in the name of Jesus head pain I curse you in the name of Jesus
Expect God to restore your social status. Mephibosheth was born a prince. He was born in the palace, raised up to be a king's son. But when his father and his grandfather died on the same day, Mephibosheth was thrown out to be a fugitive. In fact, in, because of the chaos, his nurse, when he was a child, was running away with him and he fell down and the Bible said something happened bad. You know the rest of the story. And so a, 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 a born prince now living by with a handout, by handouts from people, depending on people's generosity. Ah, God help us. I said, God help us. But one day, in the year 2020, it came into the mind of David. Does it mean there's nobody from that household? They will call for your name. I don't care where you are, but somebody will remember your name. I want you to know that David had never met Mephibosheth, did not even know that he existed. In fact, he has to ask and then call Ziba. Ziba was out to find out before they noticed and located and brought him. They will locate you in 2020. I said they will locate you in 2020. Someone said, but I'm not a prince. It doesn't matter. God called you by a better name. You are a king and a priest. Walk like it. God said, have dominion. Esau sold his birthright. The prodigal walked out of his place. But prodigal had more sense to come back to his father's house. In 2020, you shall be restored. When Mephibosheth was restored, he began to sit at the same table with David's children. His princehood, his, his princehood was restored. His social status was restored. Respect came his way again. This is the last few minutes of this year people will disrespect you. That is why we ended that word saying, my people shall never be put to shame. Shame has left your house. Disrespect has left your house. Shame and degradation has left your house. You are never going to be the last person ever again. In the name of Jesus. Stand on your feet. I just want to make a few prayers. There are some times when people lose something. You need to be restored. There are some times when it is even worse than that. Lazarus was looking for a restoration of health. But Jesus thought something better. Lazarus died. I am looking at you. I know what I'm talking about. In the name of Jesus, Lazarus, you will come out of your grave. Every dead business will come back to life again. Every dead relationship come back to life again. I command you, every dead womb come back to life again. Come back to life again. Come back to life again. Back to life again. Every of your body that is sick any part of your body that is afflicted your heart your lung your head your kidney your liver your pancreatitis any part of your circulatory system i command life i command life i command life i command life i say be restored be restored be restored in jesus name Every case that had been closed against you, I commanded reopened in 2020. Yeah. 
the file on your business, the file on your promotion, the file on your repayment, the check of which you have been waiting. Listen, look at me. I stand at God's servant 2020. Before January comes to an end, they will send you the check. In the they will call for you. They will give you back your position. They will give you back your promotion. You are going back to that position. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You said yes, but my husband died, my wife died. Yes, Job also had the same situation. But God gave it back to them. Yeah, I'm not saying, I'm sorry, I'm not promising that God is going to give you two husbands. Restoration doesn't go that way. There are things that he doesn't do that. But when I come to teach on the Bible meaning of that word, you come to know that when God restores, it's always double. Twice, double for your shame. And sometimes he gives you something better in quality or in quantity. Okay? So don't pray for two husbands because one person, or two wives. It doesn't go that way. But when I begin to teach on what he meant when, by, when he said, I will restore you years, you will know. Do you know that there are certain things that some people can achieve in five years, you can achieve it in one week? Yeah. My God! I declare 2020 your year of restoration in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and receive it. Receive restoration in your health, restoration in your business, restoration in your family. Restoration in your social status, your position. You will be respected again. Men will call for you again. Your voice will be heard again. Yes, your wealth, your position, your love will be restored again. Your children will come back again. Your friends that you pushed away, they will come back again. Men who did not know your name before will call for you. They will send for you. They will send for you. The position you lost, the business you lost, the people you drove away, even by mistake, self-inflicted mistake, you are being healed. You are being healed. You are being healed. 2020 is almost here. It's your year of restoration. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready? We have how many more seconds? 39? 27? 35? 34? 32? 31? 39? 27? 25? 24? 22? 21? 20? 19? 17? 16? 15? 13, 12, 11, 9, 8, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Happy New Year! Yeah.